Welcome to Waiting on the Trade, a monthly comics book club for people who can't keep up with monthly comics. I'm Matt, there's always a way, Ledger. And I'm Patrick, we're all we've got, Fitzgerald Fleck. This month, we're talking about Grant Morrison, Frank Quitely, and Jamie Grant's All-Star Superman from DC Comics. Now, in case you didn't know, Pat, All-Star Superman is a story in which... Lex Luthor poisons Superman by forcing him to fly too close to the sun, which I just got is like super Icarusy. <laughs> it is. Superman races against the clock to perform a number of last super and not so super feats before he dies, and Superman rehabilitates the cutest injured baby Sun Eater you've ever seen. <laughs> you you really like that Sun Eater? The Sun Eater's so good. <laughs> the Sun Eater's like one of my favorite parts of the story, actually. That's funny. Oh, like, it's so, and this will lead into the larger discussion of the thing, like, it's so Superman for that, like, karma of a thing that he just does out of, like, the kindness of his heart. He can, like, he's the only one who could do it because he's Superman to, like, pay off in good ways by the end of the story. So, I don't know. And it's just, like, it's such such a great thing. Like, it's basically, the other day, we picked up a possum that was injured and took it to be rehabilitated. It's like that, except it's an animal that eats suds. (laughs) Sure. Equally as vicious. Gotta watch out. Yeah, you gotta watch out. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So where do we want to start, Pat? Do we want to start with high points or low points? Uh, I guess high points, right? Yeah. All right. Because this is a good series. It is a good series. Like, I was thinking about it when I was writing up my notes for it, and i read like volume two so basically the last six issues on Mm -hmm. saturday and i was kind of like depressed as hell (laughs) before i started reading it oh no like i was like oh like nothing's working out just like having a bad week and like thinking about the spiral of thoughts that i have every once in a while about like oh we're out in california like part of it brought on by the fact that like our friend mike was like supposed to have his first kid this week and it's like oh i can't be there it's like that sort of stuff like those thoughts that kind of come to me every once in a while while we're out here in california instead of wisconsin Mm -hmm. i was like oh i gotta read this happy uplifting superman story and i hope like this mood doesn't wreck it for me like i hope this (laughs) like i hope that my like my depressed as hell mood is not more powerful than the uplifting power of all-star superman and all-star superman (laughs) one so that was nice (laughs) like by the end of reading it i was like in a much better mood again so that was good <laughs> well matt only the impossible is impossible so only nothing is impossible i, I forgot the quote thank you for fixing it <laughs> come on <Pat. laughs> but like I, like we talked about in the zero episode why we chose this book specifically and like that's part of why we chose this book specifically to me is like this is the most superhero book that there is it's very uplifting yeah i don't it's not even that it's just like it's one of the like biggest and most bombastic books that there are and like it's also depending on who you are because i had a discussion with my my wife about this because i had her read part of it easy to get into (laughs) there's an argument against that that's to be made and i think you kind of had similar feelings about parts of it where it's like it maybe isn't as easy to get into as i think it is but sure yeah varying levels of of superman knowledge is required it's definitely one of the easier Grant Morrison books. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I would say that the only other Grant Morrison that's probably easier to get into is his Wii 3. I was thinking about it and I thought maybe JLA is actually. See, I haven't read all that. So, but Wii 3 is well, like its own read contained. the first volume of JLA though, right? I don't remember it. I'm sorry. You don't remember. <laughs> I'm sorry. So good. How can you not? <laughs> But yeah, we three, I think, just because it's self-contained, is potentially easier to get into. It's, yeah. it's Homeward Bound meets RoboCop. I mean, what can go wrong? It's, it's That's so an good. awesome spin for that, actually. It's so good. But this this book is like two or three on the like Morrison approachability scale. And it's definitely like below your final crises and like your the filth and your the invisibles, which I've never even read the invisibles because that one, even I'm just like don't touch (laughs) yeah i haven't even read those the last two that you said filth i have never heard of that before the filth i was given as a gift and it's good but confusing as hell all right right. yeah i know the uh new x-men series we three jla 
and the Batman run are the only like Grant Morrison's that I'm really familiar with. So, yeah. but yeah, I mean, All Star Superman comparatively is you know it's not that hard, not that hard to get into. It's relatively accessible. Yeah. <laughs> Although we'll get into the reasons why it may or may not be. <laughs> so yes. how did like how did you find it upon like this reread? Because we've both read it before. I think this is probably my fourth or fifth time reading it most likely yeah it's probably my third time okay through yeah i mean i've always enjoyed it but this time probably because we're doing this show i tried to be more diligent about like tracking oh what is this a reference to and and i not being a big superhero superhero superman fan don't know all the references that are being made so it made it a little more difficult for me but i still enjoy the book regardless uh, but no, this time around, I did some research and I found like the, the continuity that Grant Morrison weaved in that I didn't know before. Yeah. So it's like a stealth continuation of a lot of Morrison stuff that's like woven into his JLA run. And then like also continues throughout. There's like this whole weird, like Morrison only continuity of DC books where you can like read his stuff in order and like see him setting up stuff that he pays off, like from basically like JLA through to what multiversity would have been like 2015, I think something like that. So like the nineties to 2015 or so like Grant Morrison's writing, like essentially one big DC comic story just did bits and pieces across multiple titles. Oh dang. <laughs> yeah. Which is like super cool because you don't need to know any of it. Yeah, no, like I say, the first two times I read this, I had no idea. But yeah, this time I looked it up and the whole Superman squad and Cal Kent and Superman Prime, who's that gold one who shows up, all were part of DC 1 million. Yeah, so when Kat, my wife, read uh, Chapter 6, which is the Pa Kent funeral one, which is probably like my second or third favorite chapter, I think. Yeah, it's my second for sure. Okay, I'm so I'm between chapter five, chapter six, and chapter ten. So those are the ones I think we're going to probably talk about the most. Yeah, it's five and six for me. So okay, I really like ten for a lot of reasons, but we'll get there. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So she's talking about the fact that like, oh, there are like two Clark Kents in this story. That's cool. I'm like, yeah, there are three Clark Kents in this story actually, because <laughs> there's pat there's past Clark, quote unquote, present Clark, who were like watching through the whole story and comes back in time basically to fight the chronovore and say goodbye to his dad uh, yeah which is really and then touching. there's super future clark which is also like a payoff for the fact that like if you didn't in the actually know, die yeah. yeah you know he's not dying like you know he's not gonna die because it's looped into this like meta story that grant morrison's been writing for the last 20 years where yeah. superman goes into the sun and then comes out <laughs> super and saves the universe yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah which was a crazy like it's a really cool Easter egg for the people in the know, but doesn't really do anything with the story. Like the story is just as good without it. But that the little story tidbit. itself might actually be better without it because you don't know for a fact that he's not going to die. But I think it's also, I'm, I'm one of those people who like flips to the end of the book and reads the last two pages every time when it's like a novel. So, Ugh. so like knowing that he's not, act well, first off, it's a, it's a Superman comic. Like he's not going <laughs> to, he's not going to die for real. Let's be real. He's going to kill off Superman. Honest. Just watch out. But like knowing that it's looped into this continuity and that by issue 12, sure, maybe stuff is going to be different, but like Superman's not dead is kind of cool for me. Like I, sure. I enjoy that. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, this time around diving into that kind of stuff is interesting. Yeah. You got to learn about Solaris, the tyrant son a little bit more. <laughs> yeah. Which, you know, was never really my biggest like favorite part of this, but you know, he doesn't he really like do that much in this story. So I could definitely like, He's We're, ominous. Re- well, like upon rereading it, like they mention him a few times before he shows up. But if he like he doesn't I have friends he doesn't in high places, much. yeah. Like besides kill my like favorite character, the baby Sun Eater. <laughs> like, true. He kind of doesn't do much besides just make Superman super angry and sort of be like poison in a, ma- the sun. in a manga. You know where there's like always the lieutenant before the boss fight, right? Solaris is the lieutenant before the boss fight. Technically, he. I mean, I guess Superman was dying anyways, but he poisons the sun, which causes Superman to quote which unquote, makes sacrifice Superman himself. do the stuff he does at the end. Yeah. Yeah. So you said six is your favorite or second favorite chapter? Yeah, six is my second favorite. Mm-hmm. Okay. Which one's your favorite? Is it the Lex Luthor interview one? Yes. 
Yeah, I think that's the best one. <laughs> Lex and Clark like playing off each other and the fact that Lex is just showing off left and right to this who he thinks is this dumb country bumpkin who is actually Superman is just Yeah, and at the same time like Lex is showing off and like proving his superiority and Clark is actually like <laughs> outwitting him the entire yes. time but feels no need to show him which is so perfectly like it's so perfectly clark like it's not even so perfectly super bad like it's so perfectly clark which is wonderful yeah he saves him from electrocuting himself he like saves him from the the riot that breaks out and lex has no idea and he thinks he's the one saving clark it's great how many times did you have to go back and look at that panel where like clark walks into lex's cell and there's that like little jolt of electricity coming out of the wall that Frank quietly draws. Yeah, yeah. It's like what it's if you're in the in the two volumes that I have, it's like page one ten in like the second panel where there's just like this tiny little jolt of electricity in the outlet. It's like final destination. I, yeah. Yeah. Gotta watch out. I haven't I think I saw Final Destination two. Yeah, it's not worth viewing, but <laughs> It's the popular culture lexicon, so, you know, the kids will get it. It's fine. The kids? <laughs> We're so hip on this I'm show. I'm not turning 30. <laughs> Shut up. We're all turning 30 <laughs> on this show this year, except Kat when she comes on next episode because she's already 30. <laughs> Positively agent. <laughs> oh, no. I also liked that Kat liked that issue, at least, because that's like that's the best issue, I think. And if she didn't, we would have had to get divorced. <laughs> Lex is just so much fun in that issue. He's just great. Yeah. Like, and I don't know, like he's not even this isn't even my favorite version of Lex Luthor, because my favorite version of Lex Luthor, like, is a little bit more nuanced to the point where he has a motivation that makes sense to me. Whereas this, like, Grant Morrison's Lex is a little bit more just like, I hate Superman, if that makes sense. I I think I, don't know, I consider him to be more Machiavellian, but the fact that his plan has already been like, he's already executed his plan. <laughs> like we're at the end of it now. Yeah. Which is a cool bit. He's just gloating, which we're not even at the end of it. End of it. We're at the part where like he's won, but he hasn't done the victory lap that he's going to do in issue 12. Right. Basically. Yeah. That whole thing. Yeah. I guess this time around, I, I noticed the whole, the robot seven being, I did too, actually. So one of the like the questions we'd written ourselves as a discussion point is like, what did you notice on this read that you didn't notice on your first? And mm-hmm. like the Robot 7 stuff was definitely on my list of like, like you know that it's malfunctioned when it's talking to Lois in issue two. Right. But you don't know exactly why. And that kind of comes through a little bit more, I think. And it on... was it was Solaris that did it, right? That like somehow hacked into I that robot. I think it robot. was Lex, actually. Was it Lex? How did Lex yeah. get access to the robot? <laughs> He's Lex Luthor, I guess, is that is how that happened? He's inside the fortress of whatever. No, it's fine. It happened. He's got Wi-Fi, man. He can turn a robot that spouts Moby Dick into a supersonic drill. Oh, my God. Literally bores into the earth is one of my <laughs> favorite really lines. Line. <laughs> oh, Herman Melville, I'm so sorry. You I have not read that book, actually. As an English major, that's one of my blind spots. <sighs> I've tried. Yeah. It's not... <laughs> Moby Not Dick worth is my, it. it's my white whale. If you will. <laughs> nice. Where does that baboon come from, by the way? Right? This, I was asking you before we started, this is, is that a reference I'm not getting? No, it's one of those things that just is weird. <laughs> it's just weird. At least as far as I know. Here, we can Google Superman baboon quick and see if we don't get I feel get like a monkey stuff. in a Superman suit has to be in there somewhere, right? That has to be a thing that happened. Like maybe in the... Uh, the older films? No, I got nothing. Nothing comes <laughs> up. Right. It's just Lex just laughing at Clark having to write this ridiculous thing. Oh, man. I really like how he just basically says, like, hey, your paper tells the truth, but the truth is going to be so absurd that no one believes it. And, and I'm going to shake this bamboo's hand and I'm going <laughs> to take you down the secret costume. Yeah. And here's my niece. <laughs> and this, like, Call comedy. her nasty. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, I can't. So, like, one of my favorite panels of the entire thing is when Lex the is, eyebrow. like, stand- Yeah, he's, like, standing there all cocky. <laughs> like, it's 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 basically that entire issue summed up in one panel, right? Is like, Lex standing there all cocky being like, yes, I've won, but his goddamn eyebrow doesn't match, and so he hasn't won. <laughs> no, it's so perfect. Like, a little aside that he does when his niece tells him, Lex, cough, eyebrow, cough, eyebrow, cough. eyebrow. <laughs> 
<laughs> he just turns aside and like takes a pencil and draws it and looks back. Which was a callback because I think earlier he mentioned something about 95% of males groom their eyebrows with the Superman swirl or something like that. Yeah. Which I didn't quite get, but whatever that eyebrow payoff was worth. I think he was talking about the the eyebrow shape beauticians call the Superman swoosh. Swoosh, yeah. So, like, did he burn off his eyebrow in the escape, or is that something that he just has? Cat's pet theory is that he has alopecia in this continuity. (laughs) I mean, maybe. So, I don't know. I'm not sure exactly what happened like i know he like during during the prison like the prison riot he like wipes sweat from his brow and that's how he like wipes it off so i think they're both drawn on he does have two eyebrows when he's like working out in front of clark yeah so like during the riot he like wipes his brow and mm-hmm. that when he gets rid of it i don't know why he doesn't on, have them uh, in the first place <laughs> what is the super villain's name i just forget. parasite parasite yeah yeah which is that's a funny use of parasite <laughs> just like Set off a riot. That's all it needs I for. I did also love the punch out the big ugly ones first, Lex, my grandma used to say. <laughs> Those Luthers, you gotta watch out. Oh, man. And like. The shorthand so comments are my best. Like, ugh. The fact that Lex Luthor doesn't understand what shorthand is, is perfect. It's something that Ma Kent taught Clark, and Lex doesn't understand it. Simmer down. Because he can say, like, oh, I, I can break any. any uh, I'm the greatest criminal genius of our time. <laughs> yes. But do you I can break any code in a minute and time me, Lex. It's shorthand. Just like chill. Simmer bro. Down. It's, it's bro. <laughs> and then everybody's freaking out. No, oh, no one stands in Luther's way. Clark's like, yeah, I can't. That volume's too much for shorthand. <laughs> yeah. Issue five is, is just, it's fun. Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking at this panel now where like Clark is running into the tear gas. <laughs> Luther's like, Kent, that's tear gas, you moron. You moron. And then you just like, you get these like tiny little hints of panels where he's more Superman than Clark in this. Like the one where he's looking at the pipes with his heat vision and like yeah. his hair kind of swooshes out more Superman-y for mm-hmm. a second. Like, but for the most part, like it's Clark in this. Yeah. Which and that gets into, cool. yeah. Frank quietly just doing an awesome job of just Clark's, posture is entirely yeah. different like it's the same guy but he's like hunched over so he doesn't have the physique of superman when he's clark and it's it reminds so me of have i like have i ever showed you because i think i've mentioned this to you before but i don't know if i've shown it to you there's like a quick little youtube clip from the 70s superman movie where christopher reeves like doing yes. the clark hunch yes, yes, lois yes. leaves the room and then like he unhunches and then lois comes back and he rehunches and it's just like amazing physical like acting via posture Mm -hmm. like it's that but throughout the comic essentially yeah all the clark sequences are really great like i think clark comes off really well in this which is why you wrote in your notes that this is like superman at his most christ-like and i just hard disagree because this story is like very much about the fact that superman wouldn't be who he is without like the kents and being clark yeah absolutely i agree with that that's what makes him christ-like all right, sell me on it. <laughs> Christ isn't God. Christ is the human embodiment of a God. What makes Christ Christ is that he was born of, of Mary and Joseph, and he lived amongst us. That's what makes Clark Clark, right? I mean, sure, but like, does that, I don't know, does the first part of that actually pay off, quote unquote, in the Bible, <laughs> which is a part. whole big discussion? The, the like, hey, he was born to human parents, so he's human thing? Like, he's human. Like, he's the human... Like, but like, is he human? Human? Like, in, like, <laughs> f- like fallible human? I mean, he's God, so I don't know how we want to get into that. I mean, like, so here's my thing: is because in in my notes, I had written like, I like that in this Superman is like he's tough, he's strong, he has his real superpower, which is Superman always does the right thing. But that doesn't mean that he's infallible. I guess, like, Sh- sure. There's the bit in chapter 10 which is the like montage of different times throughout the day bit where he's going back and forth between like saving lois talking to quintum the candor stuff is going on like he's making life in issue Earth 10, right? yeah, yeah. yeah like there's that bit where he's talking to leo quintum and he's like i can't believe i didn't think of this when leo's like hey why don't we just put candor on mars and let them go like sure. let them do their thing so like i appreciate that it's a superman who had like has his superpower where he always does the right thing. Because if you write a Superman that does something wrong, like you've probably messed it up. 
but he's also not infallible at the same time because it's just like there are things he doesn't think of or there are like maybe additional ways to solve the problem that Superman doesn't know, even with like all his powers. Sure, but I mean, he's also a comic book character and if a comic book character is omniscient, they become very boring to write for. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So like, I guess... My bit is that I don't know if I would put him as like I think there's even a bit in issue twelve where it sort of mocks the like Christ like bit where he's talking to Jor El in that dream sequence, mm. and Jor El's like they'll all join you in the sun one day, which is I think straight up a reference to one of the movies. I think it's or maybe Man of Steel stole it from that. I don't know. There's like but one of the movies is like they'll join you in the sun, my child, and like that was like the most Christ like movie. There's a voiceover in Man of Steel where he's like, they'll look up to you. You'll be the, where he's like learning how to fly for the first time. But yeah, I mean, sure. But there again, he goes back to die for us. Know what I mean? Yeah, but like, he's just going to live in the sun. It'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. I don't but know. I mean, most it's people don't like... realize that. I like the parallels are there. Like Superman is a Christ analog. <laughs> like he is. But at the same time, he's just a dude with glasses. <laughs> I don't know. Like I don't I I don't really like the Christ like Superman and like I don't like I don't find him here, I guess, if that makes sense. Although you're slowly convincing me, a little bit at least. I mean obviously I, I, you have me in a position where I need to argue for like biblical studies that I am not prepared for. No, I know. I'm asking you to expound <laughs> upon things in the Bible. We didn't read the Bible to prep for this. Oh yeah, sorry about that. It's been a bit since I read any Bible. Yeah. But no, I mean, like, I think there's, I think your argument is there, but I like, I don't know, as someone who like is actively, like actively dislikes the like, Hey, it's Superman. He's like Christ. Like this, like the simple version of that analog. Sure. Like, I don't, I don't dislike this Superman. So I find it hard to reconcile. I was about to say, things, Superman's a more complex character than Christ. So. There, are, you know, like he's in a lot more books. It's, yeah, I mean, I think we got blasphemy on our first podcast episode, so that's pretty good. It happened. Overall. We got that. We got that covered. I, like, it's not a one for one, like obviously, but I think you can't deny that it's there. Like, I don't want to expound too much on it. No, I, I, I think we we covered a a good chunk of it, and the sure. listeners can take it from there. Make up your but, own like, minds. I don't know. It's like it just. I don't think the Christ-like comparison diminishes the story in any way. I think it also is maybe because it's less of a saving us from evil, like evil sort of thing, than more of like an inspiring us to do good thing. If that makes sense. Sure. Yeah, but I mean, I would say that the the Bible is is stories of Christ that we're supposed to cop. I don't know. See again, I'm just not. I'm just not ready for this. No, I was ready for that response, actually, because it's kind of what I had forced you into, I think, is like the, yeah, but Jesus also does inspire people to do good things, which I think is a valid take. I mean, yeah. I don't know. And he's like given to a kindly couple who can't or haven't had children. And like, he's from a super intelligent, super powerful race that that give him to this lower, like, people. I don't know. It's there. Yeah, it's there. He is, quote unquote, a godlike being compared to normal humans. All right. Here's a question I didn't think we were going to ask on our first podcast Let's episode. Let's do it. Let's do it. Can you sum up Jesus Christ's origin in eight words <laughs> and four comic panels? Oh, with the. <laughs> <laughs> this might get you a don't have to actually answer heretical. it. Heretical. It's more of a hypothetical <laughs> question. <laughs> Because, like, this is based, like, the opening page is basically into the spider versus, like, hey, we're going to do this one more time, but, like, what? It's a really 14 good 14 years earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have, actually have the two-page spread of Superman, like, flying beneath the sun as my desktop background right now. <laughs> like, I'm looking at it currently. <laughs> but, yeah, the whole, like, Doom Planet. I just lost the page. Doom Planet, Desperate Scientists, lost, Last Hope kindly couple it's, i mean it's all you need it's like what's his origin there you go one page yeah Done. did it to the point where when cat read it she was like oh this again and then she turned the page and she was like oh that was refreshingly brief <laughs> <laughs> you know what i'm noticing right now i don't know if you have it on yours but on the uh reverse of the page next to it is both superman prime and 
Clark Kent from the future with his wrappings unwrapped. Yeah, that's in mine too. Was that in the like single issue? You think? No, it wasn't. I know okay. it wasn't because I have I have all the single issues at home. <laughs> okay, because that like that's a huge spoiler now that I know that that's actually the same <laughs> it's the same guy. The same guy, yeah. But I think like for ninety percent of readers, you're not meant to know it's the same guy. No, no, no. And like I said, it took me three times through, and then looking it up on Google to figure it out. So yeah, like the only like the only hint that you get that it is the same guy is let me flip to that page quick. Like when he's he when says, Superman ha. asks. Superman asks, which of my descendants are you? And he's like, ha. Because <laughs> the answer is none, none of them. I'm, I'm you, actually. I, I am you from like 100,000 years from now. But yeah, I, like, I bought all of these when they came out as single issues, which was apparently from like 2005 to 2008. And this is, I think, like started getting a little bit delayed as it came out towards the end. And no well, one it's cared. Frank quietly, so. <laughs> well, like no one cared because they were like, well, first off, it's not in continuity. So there's no like nothing's waiting on this sure. right there's no like secret final in- infinite crisis invasion that's waiting for all-star superman to wrap up it's its own complete story basically and like each issue is mostly self-contained like telling a larger story but it's like episode four episode five basically and like it was really good so no one cared <laughs> like people were like oh yeah all stars out i'll buy that this month sure as opposed to like being upset that it was late and it is the best it's the best all-star book of the two that came out <laughs> can't argue that i've i have read some of all-star batman and robin and uh other than that amazing green lantern scene there's not much to, to say there's a that. way to read all-star batman and robin and enjoy it but like i don't really want to put he the word gives in <laughs> a glass of lemonade it's real good it's it is pretty real, funny. real good but yeah that's the only part i like uh to answer your original question i personally can't sum it up but i'm sure someone could and it would probably yeah. mirror that like doom planet could like doomed humanity like fallen race <laughs> yeah something i'm thinking about it now maybe i'll try to do it for the show now <laughs> there you go. just, there just you go, go full blasphemy in the first one let's do it so five is your favorite six is your second favorite yes okay i like the six can still be your second favorite without knowing any of the mechanics of any of the stuff that's like happening quote unquote behind the scenes see it's interesting because I, I read your notes on it as, as well and you say you would like six because of the uh, superman squad stuff yeah you like it despite the superman yes, squad? i like it despite of that stuff like i the, really the, love cal kent because like i don't know who that guy I, is I, he's just a I read all the 90s JLA basically, like, not when it was coming out, but pretty close. Like, I was picking up the trade paperbacks. Mm-hmm. Um, and DC 1 million, the crossover that Cal Kent, the future Superman, is from, is in that run, basically. And, like, that crossover is so good. It's got Cal Kent. It's got the Batman of 85,000 years of the future, who, like, basically is the warden of Arkham Asylum on Pluto. Like, pl- all, of Plu- all of Pluto is now Arkham Asylum. <laughs> essentially like it's got a lot of really good high concept stuff and that guy actually just showed up at dc comics again this year which is pretty sweet <laughs> i think it might have technically been last year but like there's a panel of cal kent in the most recent justice league run which is pretty cool but i really like cal kent sure i mean that guy that guy punches his way through eighty five thousand years worth of time <laughs> like he punches <laughs> through the time barrier yeah okay so i'm into it but at the same time i could totally get the the opposite reaction of like i just want to read about a boy and his dog out the moon get this future superman out of my face like i think on from my perspective they could do without all of that like the chronovore and all the other supermen wouldn't be as like zany i mean the stuff that's like the heart of that issue is the funeral stuff right <laughs> right and like it it fits because like the whole chronovore stealing four minutes so he misses pa kent when he needs his help and he isn't able to save him but i think that could be done another way the story is real good regardless i think it's also about not just superman's legacy but like pa kent's legacy because there's that line that clark gives in the eulogy that's like he taught me how to be tough and how to be mm-hmm. kind and how to Oh, hang on just a second. I have it written down in my notes. I could flip to the page even. How to be tough and how to be kind and how to dream of a better world. Like, that's my perfect Superman to, to me. Like, sure. And that doesn't start with Clark. It doesn't start with the powers. It doesn't start with Krypton. It starts with Paquette. It's the ideals that his father taught him as a boy. Yeah. 
So like getting to see that that survives to like the year 85,273 or whatever it is, like Mm -hmm. is I think part of that story. Like, I don't know if it's an essential part of that story, but I think it like, I see how it fits. (laughs) Well, yeah. And it's, Cal Kent is one thing, but they have the Superman from the fifth dimension. Yeah. Like I don't understand why Grant Morrison always has to throw fifth dimension stuff at everything. (laughs) Mr. Flexel Pluck or whatever his name is. Mix, mixes Pitlick, I believe, is the animated series pronunciation. <laughs> but I mean, it's it's a cute and like I know of that character, so I recognize that like species that he was. So that was sort of fun. But yeah, I don't know. I'd rather it just be a human story of a boy whose father dies unexpectedly. Yeah, which is fair. A human boy who throws trees into space and his dog catches them. <laughs> yeah, which. Honestly, we talked about what our favorite like scenes are, like the picture of Superboy and Crypto on the moon, like Superboy's staring up at the stars and Crypto's just staring at his boy. Yeah. It's so sweet. That's for sure one of my favorite panels. Like I think that the full page like Lois kiss with on the moon, like there's lots of good moon bits <laughs> in this story. Um and then Oh, what else did I have on that one? I like, I really like the Clark sequence at the end of issue one, basically rain, like from Clark getting into the daily planet to the end of the issue where he unhunches basically in front of Lois. Like, I really like those sequences a lot. Frank quietly draws the hell out of that. Yeah. Issue six. It's just, it's, it's the one that made me tear up the scene where Superboy like is screaming, pa, I can't hear my pa's heartbeat. What happened? I can save him. I can save anyone. And like tears are streaming from his face because he knows that he's dead because he can't hear the heartbeat. Yeah, because he can't hear the heartbeat. And then the next few pages is him giving the eulogy at Pa Kent's funeral. It's oof. oof. And like part of the other thing is like all those supermen and superwomen like come back in time to honor Pa Kent, which I think like yeah. helps that beat of like, hey, that dude's like that dude's dad just died and like his descendants are coming back to comfort him. Mm hmm fits into that that emotional arc of it too so yeah like the the extra stuff fits but personally i think it detracts from it slightly yeah well that's a fair opinion i think which can maybe lead us into talking about the bits that we don't like as much i want to talk about i think 10 like issue 10 yeah yeah, yeah. i want to talk about 10 through the end maybe like as the last stuff we talk about yeah sure okay Right. And then maybe let's talk about the stuff that sort of fits in around there. Cause like issue one is good. It sets up the premise. There's the weird bit where Superman's face is really long, <laughs> like throughout a good chunk of that issue. And like the lighting is even different. Like I think the first 10 to 15 pages or whatever, like quietly still figuring it out. But by the end of it, when like the Clark sequences start happening, maybe it's the Clark sequences that help him figure it out. Cause like by the end of the issue, like, Clark is Clark and Superman is Superman and like he's not long and he doesn't look like Scott Summers looks in New X Men. <laughs> New X Men, yeah. Like he's more like he's more squat and like I was trying to figure out how to describe the art style and just like there's so much mass in every panel, I guess. Like there's so like there's so much of like each character and especially Superman in each panel. Like they just like fill the world with their presence, sort of, I guess. Sure. But yeah. So like I think Issue one is good. Issue two and three have Lois stuff, and yeah. Lois does not come off the best in these stories, no. which I honestly didn't notice as much. Like, I've, I've kind of noticed it in the past, but like, Kat read them and she was like, Lois is terrible <laughs> in these. And I, re- and I reread it after, and I was like, Lois is kind of terrible in these. She's not great. It's definitely not my favorite Lois. No. I guess the argument could be made that she can't. She can't rectify Clark Kent being Superman like that would just break her worldview which is a good bit especially when you get into the fact that like he's spent so much time trying to like shake her off of this like off this trail Mm. like (laughs) the bit where he's like Batman a robot (laughs) like that's how he's like saved his secret identity in the past I was like yeah 90% of the time it is Batman or a robot (laughs) but I, I feel so bad for Clark when he's trying to confess his love and his identity to this woman who he has admired for so long and she just won't 
she won't accept it. I think it's like that's part of like maybe the most silver agey bit of this story is the fact that like Superman and Lois's relationship is just kind of like just kind of there and also they're kind of dicks to each other here and there like in that Superman has been lying to Lois for years sure. and as a result like Lois doesn't believe him when he tells the truth like he's been gaslighting that's, that's, her for so long that's some like super dickery right there which yeah. is an accepted industry term by the way we'll probably end up linking to the blog in the show notes super dickery have you oh have you ever seen it no there's at least a blog called superdickery.com so that will probably help but there's definitely like an established trope of like through the silver age superman's just like kind of a dick to his friends for no reason like he does it to lois and he does it to jimmy like he like teaches them lessons or like does these really convoluted ways of like getting them out of situations where he could have just done something much simpler but like <laughs> the story demanded it and also like superman's just kind of a dick in the silver age like those issues the lowest issues seem like they're sort of the most silver agey to me in that they call back to that stuff specifically which i haven't even read that much of but i know exists that's too funny but like yeah it's just like a fully established concept <laughs> Yeah, so issue two is Lois being taken to the Fortress of Solitude. She gets super paranoid, and it turns out it's because she was exposed to some strange chemicals. Those chemicals that Robot 7, who's been Robot compromised seven, this entire come time. On. You can tell because he stutters when he talks. That's never good. It's never good. <laughs> but yeah, and like before that, Superman, like le- these are all the deadly weapons that could kill me, and... <laughs> Like, oh, that won't come back to bite us. No, it's fine. But like my issue more so than like Lois being paranoid, which is also an issue, or like Lois being like unaccepting of the fact that Clark is Superman is that she actually doesn't get to do that much also. Like no. even in the issue where she's Superwoman, she like flies for a little bit, wears some jewelry, and then sits there. Like she doesn't get to do anything. It starts off strong. It starts off with uh what is the guy's name? I can all, all I can think of was the dinosaur, but that's his father, which is an amazing oh, uh, crawl. <laughs> crawl, yes, I think. Yeah, son of the prince, son of the dinosaur. Which I don't know that is that a thing for Superman? Is that a? I don't think so. I've never heard of him. Like this is the this is the issue where I think like people are most likely to be like, wow, this has a lot of references to things I don't know about, and I'm most likely to say, yeah, and I've never heard of any of this before. I just kind of rolled with it, <laughs> like have samson and atlas showed up in superman comics i don't think so really hmm. i don't think so hang on let, let me do some googling the first thing that comes up is all-star superman <laughs> huh all right okay action comics number 320 potentially <laughs> yes all-star superman issue is based on action comics 320 and jack kirby's atlas story and first issue special so like they exist but I didn't really know about him until I read this. Okay, good. So it's just like really out there polls that Morrison is making. I yeah. can live with that. I think which is partially because like no other DC heroes are actually in this. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Batman gets name dropped a couple times. My good friend Batman. <laughs> Batman? How's he doing? No, oh, he's fine. You know oh, Batman. You know. It's Batman. He probably is not fine. He's Batman, he's actually. Batman. He's brooding somewhere. His entire life is not being fine. But yeah, no, like when she's Superwoman, it starts off with an invasion of no, lizard No, it starts people. off really good, right? You're like, oh, she's like, oh, going to kick some too. lizard butt. But no. And then, it's all taken care of already. It's already done. Two random men have already finished that for her. Yeah, and then they want to compete to see who gets her. It's like, uh, mm. Which does end up leading to like some specific moments I like, but I think overall I would rather there be a, an issue like that where Lois gets to do stuff. Well, like even as Superwoman, she's put in peril. Like, right? Like she's <laughs> hovering between life or death. Your gift is to be indestructible and super powerful. Oops, there's this Ultra Sphinx who's now like what? I mean, but that's kind of what Superman comics do in a way is like, yeah, there's this guy who's invulnerable and can't be hurt by anything. And also we're going to give him something that challenges him. Like that that's happens. That's fine, but just let Lois or kick or punch someone before that happens. Yeah. Or like have Superman be the guy who gets grabbed by the Sphinx and Lois answers the that question. That would be which fun. I, which I guess like doesn't let him do one of his 12 super labors or whatever, which well, to be fair, way, the answer, the unanswerable question in the next five seconds is the, like the dumbest and least impressive of his 12 tasks. 
I don't like she doesn't get to do anything. Which yeah. is not great. She gets sphinxed and then she gets unsphinxed because an unmovable object meets an And she also like puts force. Superman in danger for like no reason. She's like, Yeah, you'll figure a way out of it. You're Superman. That's my birthday. She's like, Oh, you guys are being you guys are being dicks to each other. <laughs> well, I mean, to be fair, she- Superman has been this like godlike being, and I don't think no. She I mean, can she's think she's absolutely right. <laughs> she's correct. That doesn't mean she should do it. Sure, yeah, and yeah, like they share a kiss on the moon. I really like that page. The other bit of that issue that I like is when I think it's Atlas says like even the S on his cape is yellow, and Superman turns oh, around like, and like oh right. boy, okay, you got messed up now. <laughs> now we're done. No one makes fun of my S. It means hope. Oh, it doesn't mean hope, though. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> like, throughout the entire run, I think Frank quietly just nails, like, most of the facial expressions. And, like, that's one of my favorite. When Superman's just like, nope, we're done here. We're okay. going to do some arm wrestling now. <laughs> I'm going to break both of your arms. And that's how it's going to be. Yeah, I mean, it's a fun issue. It's just Lois does not come out looking the best. No, and, like, it, the fact that Lois gets two issues back to back and, like, the most agency she has in them is when she shoots Superman with a laser. <laughs> yes. is like kind of not fantastic overall. So like a little bit more of that good, good Lois investigative journalism content, which like Grant yeah. Morrison has written that Lois, like that Lois exists in Grant Morrison stuff and also exists in many other comics. So it's the fact that he tries to propose to her and she like falls asleep before she can hear it. It's like, God, Clark cannot catch a break. I mean, that's semi-perfect, though. Like, that's kind of <laughs> how they're, like, if you're not going to actually marry them, which I don't think is the, like, quote-unquote, ideal Superman experience, eh, like, that's kind of perfect. They could have been engaged. I would have been okay with that. Yeah, I mean, like, then you got to start planning weddings and stuff, and, like, we only got 12 issues, man. <laughs> he, do- he doesn't need to replicate our universe. He could just not do that, and he can... He I does have to replicate our universe. We'll talk about why. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. There, like there, there's stuff. There's stuff that's good in those issues, but overall, I think not the best Lois story. And like, so that's two and three. One is basically set up. Mm-hmm. Four. Oh, four is the Jimmy Olsen story, which is okay. It's fine, right? Like, is overall fine. Like, it's a take on the like jimmy olsen transforms into things trope and it's like oh what did jimmy olsen not transform into in the silver age well doomsday wasn't around so (laughs) we'll transform into doomsday i think i actually prefer like jimmy olsen's fine i have no attachment to that character whatsoever i was more interested in the leo quintum character yeah who like is i think in i'm 99.9 percent sure is original to this story but you never know sure. these things so let me just do a well there's this oh. whole fan theory that leo quintum it is just came up when i did the lex luthor from the future come back to like do right by superman which is interesting i don't quite see it all i don't really either honestly yeah I like that Google starts to auto-complete it when I type Leo Quintum, though. <laughs> like, Lex I've Luthor. typed Leo Quintum, and it says Leo Quintum is Lex Luthor. There you go. I'll have to read that, because I never really got that. So if there's a good explanation, I'll read it. What I read wasn't convincing, but maybe maybe it was not reading the, the right place. But yeah, Liam Quintum is, or Leo Quintum is an interesting character. And like the stuff he's doing is zany, but it's not too zany. Like I can, I can accept that there's this eccentric genius trillionaire who's doing crazy stuff for project, whatever project stands for. It doesn't stand for anything apparently, because we don't <laughs> never get the description. Jimmy has more agency in his story than Lois has in hers. Actually, like Jimmy gets to yeah. actually like throw some punches. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I like Jimmy. There's a new Jimmy series apparently going to come out soon by Matt Fraction who you might know from the invincible iron man stuff you have pat yes and like that's probably gonna be good because matt fraction's really good (laughs) so i i enjoy jimmy stuff like it's really weird cute story man on the street sci-fi getting to see jimmy like like it's basically this like this story is superman's greatest hits right and like there's a big Mm. part of superman that's like superman's pal jimmy olsen so it would be kind of weird to not get a jimmy story but at the same time it i don't know jimmy is like sort of ancillary so i I get that like it's fine it sort of feels like a filler issue but i mean 
It's fine. Yeah, it you, sets you up learn about bizarro Black stuff. Black. Yeah, which yeah, which is good. The underverse, underuniverse. I think so. Okay, between the lowest, the two lowest issues, the Jimmy mm-hmm. issue, the Bizarro issues, and the Lilo and Barrel issues. Uh-huh. Which of those is your least favorite? Because I think those are the weakest ones. Uh, Bizarro. <laughs> Both. I think it might be my two. I still can't even just read the bizarro Can't speech handle the bizarro I'll talk just flip through those like i'll i for this read through i really just like hunkered down and i read it and i got through it but i usually time, skip it yeah i usually just great, like yeah. oh i can like you can understand what's going on just by looking at at quietly's art you yeah you're just like oh okay it. well like you don't I don't know if you have this experience when you read the Bizarro speech, but like when I read it, I'm like, I get the point of this. I don't need to un- like note every single word that's being said. <laughs> I have to say it out loud. Like I can't just read it to myself. I ha- I hate it. Like, and then there's that weird future speak they do too, which is also, I don't like, but Bizarro is even worse. So I like Zabaro, although I think he's maybe a little too emo. <laughs> I just, he does like the weird, the weird, conflict that they throw in the fact that the rocket is only uh, designed for one person it's just thrown in there and nothing well, that i kind of actually do take issue with like i was talking earlier about i like a superman that's a little bit fallible and a little bit like can't yeah. do everything like everything but superman like, is designing like this rocket superman could solve right? yeah. like he just made the the decision to leave zabaro there and didn't tell him well, to be fair, he thinks that Sabaro can't handle the stresses of the like getting thrown through gravity, <laughs> essentially, hmm. which is possibly true because Sabaro, I think, is more of just like a human than a Superman. Can I? Okay, well, let's before we get too far. Yeah, Bizarro lore. Are there's a Bizarro version of everyone? <sighs> it depends, man. It's like there's been. This is one I don't even want to get into. Like, I don't think we'll link anything in the show notes because, like, there have been so many Bizarros and they're all completely different. And, like, there's Alien Bizarro, there's Lex Luthor Groom in a Lab Bizarro, there's this weird Underverse Bizarro. There's yeah, like, like when they invade Earth and like they attack that party, uh, Amanda Waller or whoever that was gets attacked no, by that's one <laughs> Daily Planet reporter. <laughs> okay. But she gets attacked and like it turns into her, but then she gets turned into one too. Yeah, that's new to me. That I don't think has been out in anything outside of this. There are like zombies in this, which I don't understand because they're also like now there are two bizarros that look the same. I thought the whole thing was that there's a universe of opposite us. Yeah, which is definitely a take on it where there's just like a planet that's like Earth but a cube and all of us live there except we're all <laughs> which, dumb and backwards. Yeah, which they play up. Oh, God. Like, I don't like the Bizarro issues at all, and it's still my least favorite, but this one time, I don't know if I, I didn't notice it before, but the, the introduction of the Bizarro JLA was hilarious. I didn't okay, notice, the, like, the quips. The best part of that for me is not even, like, the actual, like, Frank Quitely drawing stuff. It's the Grant Morrison bit where Batman was shot by his parents. Shot by his parents, and then Wonder, Bizarro Wonder Woman was born a baby and then turned into turned a statue. Into clay. Those, those are really funny. <laughs> it's they real good. Make the issue worth it. They're it's really for the good. people who know the origins of. It's so great. I laughed at that, and it's like, okay, maybe it was worth struggling through all this bizarro. Uh, it wasn't quite. <laughs> like they're like they're funny, but if you were like, well, do you need to read them to keep reading the story? I'd be like, you can probably skip them, actually. Right? Like, and you can't really skip any of the other issues because, like, stuff that happens in those lowest issues comes back later, and, like, stuff that happens in the Jimmy issue even comes back later a little bit. There's, like, a Bizarro Jorel. Yeah, that's weird to me because, like, that dude's dead. Why is there a Bizarro Jorel? Because he died in our universe, so he lived in that one. He is lived what in they this said, one, but then. But then... The entire crypt- yeah, that breaks down pretty fast, I think. Why is he on the Earth version of. Yeah. And what. Is the planet sentient? They keep talking about the Apparently planet needed to is. feed. And it, like, attacks from the Underverse. It's weird. It's a very weird two part thing. And I don't know if anything actually comes of it that's actually necessary for the plot. Other than borrow maybe it, some poetry. Maybe it's one of his, like trials i don't know <laughs> i don't know i think escaping the underverse is technically a trial yeah i think that's one of the like 12 feats it's two issues it just well the a, first a issue was more like superman fights a mon- like fights an alien invasion more than it is the bizarro stuff i guess 
And like that that first issue also has those good good silent pages with when he says goodbye to the Sun Eater too. And I'm just like, no, my boy, <laughs> the Sun Eater. <laughs> Sorry, I don't remember that. But I'm sure it was very oh, dare you. It's got really good shadows on it, too. It's also got that bit where Superman like x-rays Steve Lombard and he's like, hmm, I don't know oh, if before, I could... Performance enhancing drugs. I don't know. I don't know if I can tell everyone to do that. <laughs> yeah, there's like four silent pages near the start of issue seven and it's Superman saying goodbye to his good, good friend, the Sun Eater, flying away, smiling, being like, oh, I hope that dude's going to be happy and doesn't die in issue 12. <sighs> And then he gets attacked by Bizarro's and there's that, like, I think it is one of like the only two page spreads in the book, actually. Like there's the one where Superman's flying under the sun and there's this one where Superman's being like carried towards Bizarro Earth. The goodbye is is fine, but like, I don't understand what happens after that. So that's sort of why I just like. Yeah, that's definitely one of those Grant Morrison, like I cut out the boring bits, but also the boring bits. Bizarro's start attacking him and throw him towards the cube world. I don't know what's going on. And also, if it's coming out of the underverse, does that mean it came out of like the project? Like it had to come over but that also hole, that appeared right? in space somehow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening? No, there. I think those are probably the weakest two issues. Although the discussion we had about the lowest ones, those aren't great, but they're they have fun stuff in them that sort of redeems. Yeah, they've it. got Superman whistling, and they don't have Bizarro speech. The Bizarro speech really is like. It's painful. Man, you can keep trying comics writers, but you're just never going to get it to work. Even the one bit that I like is when Superman finally understands how to use the Bizarro speech and they start booing him because that's how they cheer. Yeah. Yeah. It's cute, but it's yeah, it's too much for two Yeah, issues. but you have to do an entire issue of Bizarro speech to get the payoffs. <laughs> so yeah, that's seven and eight. You want to talk about the kind of like waste of an issue that is issue nine also? Yeah, it's it starts off interesting. He comes back from the Underverse and he finds out that he's been replaced by two other super people. Yeah, Lilo and Barrel. Barrel, yeah, which turns out they were Kryptonian scientists that were set adrift for decades and have finally made their way to Earth. And they're a little more racist than, than our <laughs> Superman. <laughs> it's a cool bit because it kind of shows like what a Superman that doesn't have the Kent's influence might be like. Right. Like, he might not even be that good overall. And at the same time, it also gives Superman a look at, like, oh, hey, maybe Earth would be fine without me. And then as the issue goes on, he's like, oh, god damn it. (laughs) This is all going to shit. So there's, like, there's a lot of interesting stuff in there, except it doesn't... I feel like the ending is rushed, and that's what ruins it, honestly. I agree. They asked like really big questions of Superman, which I don't think Grant Morris was prepared to answer in that issue. Like, I think whole... he's prepared to answer them, but doesn't have enough space is what Maybe. happened. Maybe because Lilo and Burrell are asking Superman, why didn't you take control of this planet? You obviously could have, you could have like raised this place up instead. They're, they're crawling around in the mud, which is honestly like a fair question. Yeah, like he has the technology in the Fortress of Solitude to do everything that Lilo and Burrell do. And like, I do think that kind of prompts some of his responses in issue 10, too, where he's like, okay, we're going to figure out Kandor. Okay, we're going to like let these miniature Kryptonians go to work on Earth some cancer. Yeah, yeah, Like, I think it does kind of force him, like, the, them coming and also the fact that like he's dot di- like that, I think that almost makes him realize he's dying more than anything besides maybe Lex in issue five, like forces him to like reconcile with some stuff in issue 10. So I think there is merit to issue nine, but I think the ending is super rushed. Yeah. All of a sudden they went through some space dust that, which is hinted at by the fact that Lilo's eyes have turned green. Is that what it is? Cause I didn't like all of a sudden they're saying, Oh, you're some minerals in your body have turned to kryptonite, which doesn't make any sense. But I mean, it's comics, Pat. <laughs> That's what I've got for you on that one. <laughs> I guess, but I, I thought kryptonite was radioactive chunks of krypton. Yeah, so they passed through it on their way. Uh, I don't so know. So I man. guess we have iron in our bloodstream, and I guess that could, I, I don't know. They passed through a certain radioactive cloud in space, which caused the minerals in their bodies to turn to toxic kryptonite. But Obviously. then he says, that happened to me too, so that's why I was weakened. When did that happen to him? No, the kryptonite was weakening him. Like the kryptonite in them is why is why they can actually like punch him and it matters cuz like he's been getting stronger throughout the whole story so the fact that they can actually hurt him is like surprising. 
kind of absurd. Yeah, yeah. Okay, sure. But the, yeah, the quick turnaround, they're sick, they're dying, he has to save them. And he does that by transporting their their brains, their consciousnesses into the Phantom Zone. And that never actually, like, solves, like, it doesn't solve the argument they were having. No, but before that, they're like, we were wrong, you were right, you're the best of us. It's like, no, that's, what? Like, five minutes ago, you were cursing him. I don't understand. And it's done. And it's just like, okay, well, that was an issue. Where, like, if they had kind of dropped, like, hey, this kryptonite poisoning was sort of, like, tainting your minds also, maybe that's something. But, like, yeah, that's not maybe. even really, like, that's not even text. That's, like, maybe subtext if you Or maybe just keep it. them racist. Keep them, <laughs> <laughs> like, they are still who they are. Yeah. and But Superman can see past that and still wants, like... Burrell says, even everything I've done to you, you're still willing to help me. And then he like makes the switch himself. He doesn't have to. He could still be the jackass, but Superman would still save them. Yeah. So I don't I don't understand the turn for them. Yeah, it's I don't know. It's like it's a it's a good issue with interesting ideas, but like characters that I don't really care about also like Sure. Like they just kinda of, like Jorel or not Jorel, Barrel and Lilo just like well the that kind of that slip kind of like betrays the issue. Well, the fact of... that Bar Al is is the house of L, which means he's related to Cal Al. <laughs> it's sort of like when your like your parents drop by though at the same time, right? Like it kind of is that like you've got hey, a racist I've been off of college, uncle. This is what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, they're like, oh, you're not good enough. You haven't been doing anything right. It's like, oh, c- oh shut up, you guys. Come on. It has that panel where Superman goes from like his like cool collected superman pose to his like chest all the way out superman (laughs) pose which is like there are so many different degrees of clark to superman to like i think this is like the most like super heroic quote unquote i don't know when lilo and burrell see them like pretending to be clark and they're just disgusted it's like what are you doing (laughs) like you've gone native man (laughs) Oh, that also does have my like one of my favorite moments where he just sets fire to Steve Lombard's hairpiece because like, which is one of the things where I'm like, he's not Christ-like. He get he gets pissed off and he sets fire to people's hair pe- hair pieces. Christ would not do that. Christ would know, turn man. the other cheek. He would not use his heat vision for practical jokes. <laughs> there's a gap in the Bible from when Christ is born <laughs> and then is, he's like yeah. 18. So there's stuff that happens. But like I I see the bits of it that like connect and make it work and like I overall still like that issue. I think, but I think. I, I, yeah, I think it's, it's okay, but they waste the potential. It's, it's, it's got a weird end. It's super quick. It's just like kind of crammed in there before the, the end game, essentially. Mm-hmm. Speaking of which, you want to talk about issue 10? <laughs> yeah. So the, did you know that the Earth Q, which lives in the infant universe of Q, is not only in this story. <laughs> it's not? They no, look... it's in other stories. Is it outside Grant Morrison's stories? No. <laughs> okay. It's part of like the weird Grant Morrison 20-year meta story of DC. Ah. So like, he... I know what he's doing with it in this, and I really like it, but I get it how... It is our he... universe, right? Like, it's us? I mean, it, yeah, because like on the, what, last, second to last page of that issue, basically like... Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster are creating Superman. Superman? Yeah. yeah. Which is what happens in a world without Superman. Well, they, they got Nietzsche him. talking about the Superman. The too, Superman. Well, it's on. like basically yeah. following the history of Earth up to when those boys put pencil to paper in 1939. Yeah. Which does that mean that universe is like time is going rapidly faster? Faster, than yeah. The universe for sure. of. Okay. Yeah. It's basically like throughout that one day that Superman's living, time is accelerated in that universe to the point where Earth goes from like humans just coming into existence to sure the 40s i guess <laughs> see it, it pulls into a whole other thing of superman I, when i think superman i don't think of like super intelligence but that is one of the things he was granted right like he has improved intelligence as well yeah as... it's a thing at one point superman had all the things he did you know super ventriloquism is a thing pat <laughs> i think i did know that yeah <laughs> But like he creates a he creates our universe. Like we all owe our yes. lives and existence to this Superman. Who... To be fair, I think he finds that universe and then accelerates time in it and creates life. Oh, is that it. what it is? Okay, yeah, but whatever. But it's in his lab, it's right? Thing. Like I don't. Understand. Okay, yeah. whatever. Anyway, yeah, it's been in his lab books. since at least issue two, because Lois sees it. That's right. Comic books, man. <laughs> They're a trip. I I really like issue ten. <laughs> issue ten's great. I don't dislike issue ten. 
it gets weird with the, the giant robot and then the time capsule that was from the future that then tells him about Solaris coming to attack. Pat, did you do you know what I think I just realized on this reread? Huh. That that guy in the time capsule is like the great great grandson of Reagan, the person that Superman saves. <laughs> Real what? I, I tried to decipher the future speak so much. That well, I couldn't that's the do thing. It. I think the future speak is what just like hides it for so long. Because like I like I said, I've read this four or five times. Yeah, and I didn't catch it until this read, and it's like great, great, greatest grandmo at twenty one C, which is twenty one century. Oh, life to you! And I think that's probably Holy Reagan. Holy crap! Sure, yeah. Why not? So like. That weird, like, that one, like, simple act that he just does because he's Superman, like, gives him the time to prepare and actually, like, fight off Solaris. I mean, that's a really good part. Is that in issue 10? The Regan yeah. suicide yeah. attempt? Yeah, because, like, four pages later is when the time capsule is unlocked. Yeah, I mean, that's really good. I would agree with that. And, like, the whole taking a bunch of cancer patients on a bus tour of the world. It was pretty cute in the beginning. I really like Leo Quintum going into Candor and solving it. Cause that's, that's also really me, fun too. Yeah. Because a lot of this story is callbacky stuff in mm. a way. Like it's all it's all current and like you get it. And like I don't think like I said, you don't have to have read anything before you read this to like read this story. But Leo Quintum going into Candor and being like, Oh yeah, we're gonna do this, like this is how the world's gonna survive post Superman is pretty cool to me because it's like the part of the story where the story is pushing forward more sure so that's pretty like i like for that there's a colony of kryptonians on mars miniature kryptonians yep and they're and like six of them are flying around on earth and they're curing cancer i do think it's funny that they talk about brainiac like i solaris is just a random thing that grant morrison pulls in of course he's going to use it because it's his thing but brainiac is the one that i would think would make an appearance yeah like of the like, not a lot of Superman villains actually show up in this. Like, you get Jimmy Olsen as Doomsday. You get yeah. Superman as Mixes Pitlick. But you don't mm-hmm. get, like, Metallo. Like, even the guy in this issue, I would have sworn, if you'd asked me before you reread it, the guy that, like, grabs Lois and Lois is like, don't ask. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I would have sworn that was Toy Man, except it's not. <laughs> he has Alzheimer's. It's just a weird thing. I don't know. That was a weird part. And it makes more sense. Like, I do like the whole, if that is Regan's great, 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 great grandchild. I like that. That's, that's a nice time. Yeah. I appreciate that. And like that, that page is probably the, actually the most iconic page of the issue. Like that page shows up on Reddit and like once a year, basically. It's really good. There's also another Superman volume that deals with a woman who's going to commit suicide by jumping off a building and Superman like waits with her. I don't, I don't know if you've read that or seen it or. Yeah, there are a couple. Like, and I, like, think, I don't know if this is the first one or. I think most of the rest of them happen after this one. Okay. Like, they're riffing on this. Sure. Like, this is just one page. Like, you you see the therapist begging Regan not to do it on her phone or his phone, I'm not sure. But that Regan like, confrontation is like one page, and it's really powerful just because it is just one page. Yeah. But even that bit also like kind of suffers from the Morrison hyper condensed problem of like, if you don't read every single speech bubble on the page, like the panel before you don't understand where he came from and like how he got there to the point where when Kat was reading it, she had to flip back basically. Oh, well, Um, I mean, there's that like, while he's saving the train or whatever it is, you see the therapist talking yeah but like i don't know like f- later on like he does like superman hearing and he overhears the therapist again begging regan not to do it yeah which i think is maybe just cat was flipping through issues pretty quick at that point because it was <laughs> sure. off of the bizarro the stuff end. but it's yeah, like yeah. i don't know it feeds into that argument that i think you can make about this story that it still does have like the grant morrison hyper condensed what's going on sort of aspect to it once in a while sure but the page by itself is so powerful that like who cares right at the same right. time Ah, you're much stronger than you think you are, Pat. <laughs> this is good comics. <laughs> Did you know? It is. So, like, the other things I like about issue 10 are the fact that this sort of plays into a common Morrison thing, but, like, a, a world without Superman, like, basically creates Superman. <laughs> is They create the their deal. own Superman? Yeah, yeah, like, it's like, if Superman doesn't exist, like, we'll make, we'll make one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, which comes back in... Um, which- Quintum at the very end, yeah. Yeah, that, and also like the new Fifty Two Superman that oh. Morrison's doing, like it comes back in that too. So that's cool. Which we'll get to the end where we're like, hey, what would you recommend as a follow up to this? Like, mm-hmm. 
the new 52 era action comics book that Morrison does is like pretty much directly a follow up to this. So oh, interesting. I recommend that. So the Superman in that it's not this Superman, right? The yeah, ad is, is it? Oh. This is part of the whole deal. It's part of the whole deal, man. Is it Superman prime or just is that Superman? So like, it's weird. Cause it's the new 52. So it's like, I don't know what that is. DC reboot. Explain? It's a, okay. it's one of the like seven DC crises basically where okay. like the flash went back in time, tried to save his mom. Couldn't. And then the universe got really wonky as a result of him fixing it. I know about that. The flashpoint. Thing. So then, yeah, flashpoint. So Superman wore jeans and construction boots for a while as a part of that. All right. Sure. <laughs> and that's, that's a Grant Morrison book, basically like the first 18 issues of that. Um, but it's this Superman still like, huh. which doesn't quite work because like this Superman is not that In the sun. <laughs> it's quote, it's close. <laughs> All, right. All right. So, okay. All right. You, you raised the question sort of to me, all-star Superman exists like off in the weird future of Superman comics. Like whatever Superman comics are coming out now, all-star happens like 20 years after that, or like five years after that. I'm fine with it not having any place in the continuity. Like it can just be its own little story. Yeah. Like I don't need it to have bearing on anything else. That's fine. It's just it's a good Superman story. There was something that I think I think it was like Bruce Tim said about Batman Beyond, where it like always happens 15 years from now. Hmm. Like that's what I feel about All Star. Basically, like it happens. It's always five in the future. Now or like 10 years from now. Yeah. Sure. sure, sure. Yeah. But yeah. Issue 10 is pretty good. Yeah, I would agree. They make Superman. Clark gets to publish his headline. Like, oh, the fact that like Superman is dying, but like makes time for Clark shows how important the Clark Kent identity is to him. Like, it's not just Absolutely. like a mask, essentially. Mm-hmm. Yeah, doesn't he? Yeah, and he, he gives the genetic code to Quintum to create. Yeah, which, like, there are a lot of theories, like, when it was coming out that Quintum was, like, some sort of secret traitor or something. And I think, like, Grant Morrison sort of directly addresses those with the, like, yeah, I think I'm a better judge of character than that when they're standing <laughs> on Mars. For sure. And, like, we'll get it, like, the very last, I don't know, it's the very last I remember, but the whole Quintum looking back and there's a giant superman colored door with a two on it yeah like the, project the two. S, yeah that's the last page yeah which part of my like looking up the continuity there's a superman secundus that happens eventually yeah which that's some like weird grant morrison stuff that i honestly don't even remember but like i know right. that it's a thing now that you say it <laughs> so like if there is going to be a superman with a two instead of an s superman secundus would be the one right yeah and i think like superman secundus is the first of the like Superman what it's not hierarchy. I don't remember what it is, but like the dynasty. Yeah. Like the descendants basically. Yeah. yeah. The Cal Kent eventually. So like the whole thing, like Quintum like kicks off that dynasty, yeah. which is like, again, if you're in the know, it's sort of cool, but if you're not, it's just, it also kind of feeds into, and this is a thing I got from the, like Mark Wade's introduction to volume two. And I didn't pick it up before that. Like, mm-hmm. The fact that when Lois talks to the unknown Superman from 4500 AD, she thinks like, oh God, we had like terrible children. Like the actual answer is that they didn't have children. Doesn't he ask her who J-Lo is? Yeah, he does. Like, okay. Yeah, all right. That's a joke. <laughs> it's a weird place for it, Grant. What are you doing? Yeah. It's sometimes he, like, I don't know. There's also, he does that thing. I think you mentioned it where he's like, oh, that villain has Alzheimer's. Like, uh, like, like you why? don't really have to Some blame it on a mental dis- disease. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Grant. <laughs> yeah. And just, yeah, it goes back to like carnivores. Cool. I guess the ultra sphinx is a thing, but like, yeah, could be more simple than that. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. All right, so let's get into the end game. Yeah. Which is basically boss fight into boss fight. <laughs> yes. So Solaris, the tyrant son, which we've heard rumor of, he's here. And Superman just kind of deals with it, honestly. Yeah, and he's like, well, I've, I'm prepared for you, so this is this is not a thing. Yeah, like, does end up losing All everyone's favorite character, the Sun Eater. Oh, yeah. And, and the sun no eater. one cares about the robots. Maybe Robot 7. Robot 7 sacrificed Orgasm himself. Because <laughs> he was guilty. The Sun Eater, though. like I'm interested that you have such a, an emotional connection to this thing. <laughs> He's just trying to... He comes back because Superman helped him. Which is sure. like part of the theme of this, too, is like all of Superman's good deeds throughout like inspire people to help him out. Step like, up, yeah. Like Jimmy's like, okay, he saved me a million times. I'm going to try this doomsday virus out, I guess. Like the Sun Eater comes back. 
uh, like the great great grandson of Reagan is like, hey, I like risk, I owe risk you. getting yeah. like sent to prison to send you this time capsule. Solaris is coming. Yeah, no, I, I see it, and that that definitely is a thing. This does also have the panel that I stole from my comics blog, where Superman's saying, "There's always a way," and about to put on his new. Where he's taking his shirt costume. off. Yeah, yeah. I'm like I don't know. Like, so I was thinking about that today because I was like thinking about oh okay we're talking about all-star superman for the first one why did we choose all-star superman and it's like because it's one of the most positive comics there is and like that's one of the reasons i made the comics blog in the first place is like i want to have an outlet where i can write about things that i like and that are good and that like generally spur positive discussion and are fun i guess you guess. <laughs> i don't know about you pat but sometimes the internet's a little bit of a doubter to no me. i mean i agree like yes but I think you can have constructive conversations about not happy things. Like it oh, doesn't yeah. have to always be bright. But it's just like that's like that's one of the reasons I think I would rather choose this comic for our first episode than like something for sure. else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's because like this is what comic books give me sometimes. Sometimes I'm depressed on Saturday morning and I want to read All Star Superman. Yeah, yeah. So Solaris shows up. Superman punches him. Lex has got superpowers. Yeah, which he just he stole the formula from from Robot Superman. Seven. Robot Summoner could you? <laughs> he gets to be super. And by standing in Superman's shoes, he sees what Superman has seen and that everything is connected. You're glossing over the fact that Superman's trying to spend his last minutes getting Clark to be able to publish a headline. <laughs> also, I'm sorry. Though. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I mean, like, I don't know. That's super cool to me that, like, between fighting the tyrant son and, like, taking on super powered Lex Luthor. He really wants to make time to publish the goddamn last headline of his life. Well, no, doesn't he collapse on his computer before yeah, Lex he, like, shows he up? Yeah, he passes out on top of it, basically. Yeah. And then, yeah, Lex shows up and says, Clark is the least of your problems. Yeah, but then, like, Clark is actually the most of his problems. <laughs> yeah, little does he know. And then he's got a gravity gun. Bam! Because he understands that gravity warps time and he only has 24 hours. But relativistically, it's less than that now. Ha ha ha. Which is good comics. That's yeah. good comic sci-fi bullshit. It's not even sci-fi bullshit. It's like basic. It's good. It's good sci-fi bullshit. And you get like, so we've had Clark pretending to not be Superman. We've mm-hmm. had like Superman saying, hey, I'm Clark throughout this. And then we finally get like clark saying hey i'm superman basically yes. like we get all of the possible variations basically throughout the 12 issues but yeah lex's like final realization that like oh my god this is how he sees things every day like it's all just us in here together and we're all we've got yeah i've used that one on the blog too <laughs> that's another good one yeah him realizing that superman is superman because he's superman like a yeah like that's Superman does good things and eventually they come around is basically like the theme of Superman in this story. And like, even in this one, like it gets Lex, which I think is the ultimate Superman story. The one where like Lex gets transformed by Superman into being a quote unquote, if not good, at least like he gets the point. Which is like their tie in the whole he's Leo Quintum, but I don't think it's quite there, but yeah, I don't see it either. I honestly hadn't even thought of it till you brought it up as a thing that could, Possibly I didn't think about exist. it until I did my research. So, internet wackos, what are you going to do? Why are you doing it, internet? <laughs> did you know that there's an animated version of this story? I did. I've never seen it, though. Yeah, I like saw some YouTube clips. It's weird because it's they try to mimic Quietly's art. and it doesn't... It's not really animatable, I don't think, honestly. And I think that's partially down to what I said before of like there's so much like substance to it. Like... It'd be hard to move all of it, I guess, is sort of what I would say. Yeah, they went for more of like Superman, the animated series kind of thing. Yeah, which makes sense given the people that do those movies and also the fact that like I just don't I just don't think there's a great way to animate a quietly art. <laughs> Their ending, I'm pretty sure, ends with Lex being the one that combines the DNA. I'm pretty sure. I might be misremembering that. That honestly is sort of a like sort of a better ending. Like Lex is the one that that creates another Superman because he realizes. I kind of like that ending actually. Now that you say that, because like that, like closes the circle on the fact that like Superman inspires everyone to do good, even Lex. Right. Yeah, because this one ends with the realization that he gets punched out, and Superman's like, "You know what? You could have saved the world if you really wanted to, Lex, but you didn't." Which is still a good panel. You also then get the like Lois Superman. Oh. Oh, your poor face. <laughs> That's just a weird line. I love you, Superman. Oh, your face. It's got some glowing cracks. I'll be cracks here when it. you get back from the sun. 
I'll wait for you. How long will it take to fix this? Oh, 100,000 years. Oh, no. 85,000 years. Lois Lane, she waited. You do get that really good Superman in the Sun splash page, though. Where he's like... Oh, like the, the, the Renaissance version? Thing? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a fun yeah thing. It's cool. It's a good one. <laughs> I'm looking at these last pages where, Lois, where like Quintum's about to initiate Project 2 and like... I now can't help but think of like how much better it would be if Lex was involved. Yeah, like that was the one part that people were saying that the the movie got got right that the comic did not. I do like that Lex is like brain beats beats Braun every time in issue five, and, and, and the then end, Superman like, comes Superman back beats him with brain. You're right, Lex. <laughs> Just hiding behind that safe. I'm looking at the panel on like page one forty three in volume two where he's just like. Oh my god, I hope this works. <laughs> He's hiding behind that. Oh, please, oh, please, oh, please. Yeah. Oh, Quietly does just like nail the facial expressions. And the colors are super good in this too. No, the coloring is really great. Like, it's a world where Superman's primary colors like stand out, but don't like not fit at the same time. Like, mm-hmm. Superman fits, but it also like stands out on the page, which I think is hard to do sometimes. Well, coming from the horribly bleak superman movies we've had this is just a breath of fresh air dude i just want i just want a superman that knows what the right thing is and does it (laughs) that's what i want and this is this is him yeah he doesn't need to snap any necks he doesn't have to get in like big old city destroying fist fights where like people are dying like i don't need that grimdark stuff i need a superman that like inspires people to do good and then is also rewarded for doing so (laughs) All right, so you have final thoughts before we talk about, like, I guess kind of stuff that we'd maybe recommend people jump off to as a part of this? Because I think we'd both recommend it to people overall. Yes. Even yes. though I think there is an argument to be made for the, like, it's too busy in spots. I think if you're on board for wanting to read a Superman comic, you'll be good with it. Well, you you have said, like, you haven't really read any other Superman comics, right? Yeah. Okay. Would you, like... As a result of rereading this, if I was like, Pat, here's some Superman comics you should read, would you read them? Sure. Okay. Is this that a qualified sure? Well, I mean, Superman has never been my favorite superhero, and it's probably because of the way that I've seen him written in other comics or other uh, media, where he is just like, he has all the superpowers, and he can do all the things, and like that's a really boring character. And I'm probably, I'm just like, you just have to be able to challenge him right like that's the thing it's like it's not it's not that hard but like it is i get it at the same time of like you need to challenge him in a way where he can still be superman and then you've got a good superman story Mm -hmm. which is what happens here i mean yes i like the research i did like showed me that there's other things that that happen with superman yeah i'd be open to doing more superman so if i was going to recommend you a superman story as a result of this yes I would give you that new 52 run that Grant Morrison does on Action Comics. I think it's Action Comics. Let's look it up quick so I don't... And so that's don't a, that is a reason. Superman comic? It's not like a JLA? It is actually... No, a... it's um, Action Comics. The first volume is called Superman and the Men of Steel. Okay. Um, it's got the big old new 52 like announcement on the front like because it basically... After Flashpoint, they re- rebooted everything. They did a bunch of TV ads. Like, this is even Action Comics got set back to like issue one, which is a big deal because Action Comics is run like consecutively since the God, the 30s, I guess. Oh, dang. So, like, they did finally put it back to the right, like, the quote unquote right numbers when they did Action Comics 1000. <laughs> but so basically, like, the new 52 Action Comics number one Grant Morrison story. It has really weird parts, but like a lot of it's really good. So I don't know. I don't know if I would straight recommend it. I would recommend it if you're okay with the busy, like the busy stuff in this, I think. Sure. I mean, for me as a Grant Morrison fan, I think I could probably handle it. Okay. If someone else were to read this as their first Superman, would you still recommend 52 to them? I think I might kick them back to the Morrison JLA stuff first. Okay. Because that's a little bit more straightforward, especially like the first story arc, New New World Order, is mm-hmm. like the JLA versus Martians, essentially, which I kind of spoiled some of the plot by saying that. But like, 
it's relatively straightforward yeah and like batman gets some cool scenes in that (laughs) too but superman also gets some good moments so i think that would be a good start and that also starts you on the track towards figuring out who the hell cal kent is (laughs) if you if you're into that and then actually probably like the least like the the most accessible thing maybe this is like it's a tie with Morrison's JLA is like the current action comics run by Brian Michael Bendis is really good. And it's got really hmm. good Clark stuff in it. So if you're like, I like Clark as a result of this, which is what my wife <laughs> has said, basically like she read <laughs> issue five and she was like, I don't really like Superman. I like Clark though. <laughs> that the current action comics run is pretty good. It's got good Clark stuff in it. Nice. Yeah. So what would you recommend Pat? If you were like, Hey, I read this and I liked it. Uh, I like you point out. I can't really do Superman recommendations because other than some JLA stuff, he I don't know much about him. It's a big Superman shaped hole in my comic knowledge. Uh, but otherwise, if you're into more Morrison quietly, I would love to say go ahead and read some new X Men. But that that might be a bridge too far for most. So having recently reread the first arc, because we thought we might do that for this episode before mm-hmm. we decided all star was a better choice. Like I think the first arc you can get into, although there is like weird stuff again, like it's again, there's weird stuff that you kind of, you don't have to know, but if you do know it, it's better. Like, I don't know if you even knew this Pat. like Cyclops was possessed by apocalypse for a bit in the nineties. I think it was late nineties or early two thousands. And that's kind of informs his actions throughout new X-Men. <laughs> See, I didn't even know that. It's still one of my favorites. Yeah, I know. So, like, I think you could still get into it. Yeah. I don't know. But it does get weird, so... It also isn't Quietly all the way through, too. True. Quietly does... Yeah, it's true. He does a few of the issues. But, yeah, it jumps around on artists. But it's Grant Morrison all the way. Even 500 years in the future. Uh, (laughs) But if you're not up for jumping into the marvel x-men universe which you know i can't blame you it's a tough sell (laughs) yeah uh but no if if you liked this i can full-heartedly give my recommendation to we three because i think you would like that equally as much if you liked this series okay so here's a question i've got for you because i was Mm -hmm. thinking about it as i was reading this is all-star superman the best frank quietly book I would say We Three is the best Frank Quitely book. Oh, see, I can't disagree with you because it's been quite a while since I read We Three. I was thinking about it versus like their Batman and Robin run, which I would not recommend you just jump into as a result of reading this, <laughs> sure, although it's really but... good. Um, like, I really like that run, but I think this is probably better Quitely stuff. There's so like We Three. Just to give us, it, I gave a little synopsis of its Homeward Bound with. Robocop mixed in. It's three animals, a dog, a rabbit, and a cat that have been given cyborg enhancements and they're like military experiments, but they break away to try to like find their homes. And because they're animals, they are like intelligent. They do have like some phrases they say to each other, but mostly it's told through Quietly's art. And he does such a good job of telling that story. It's just it's really fantastic. And it's like, I don't know, less than forty pages long. It's just, it's really good. I do remember it being basically like weaponized emotions, especially near the end. Yes. No, it, it, it's heavy. So like if you're not ready to tear up, maybe don't do it. But still, it's just it's worth it. If you if you liked All-Star Superman, if you liked Morrison quietly, give it a go. All right. So I think that ends our discussion of All-Star Superman. Check back next month when we'll be talking about the book Seconds by Brian Lee O'Malley with my wife Kat as special guest host. Thanks for listening. Thanks, guys.